second generation of Holocaust survivor. My father is, came from Poland, I have a Polish passport. Uh, and since I heard the script that my father screams through his lap, the subject of the Holocaust is in my blood, in my heart, in my mind. And normally every time that Johnny asks me to speak about these amazing people, he you knows that I never read it from the paper. But it's very, very important to me. So I wrote it because I want I want it to stay with me. Because this subject is very important. So good afternoon to everybody. I would like to start to thank all the people who have put so much of their time and efforts into making this project happen. My special thanks go to Johnny Daniels, which I saw spent a lot of many, many, many white nights organizing and preparing everything. I would like also to thank Mr. Roman Abramovich for his support <coughs> to this project and his staff, Rola and others. They really, really did everything and they did it from their heart. Also, I would like to say now <coughs> how good I feel to be here and how proud I feel to be part of this project and they gave me the honor to give some to give some word about this. My grandfather Abraham, his wife Huda, and five of their children were exterminated in the Holocaust. In the winter of 1940, the few remain, remaining members of the Granat family, my family name is Granat, not Grant, my family, were deported by boxcar trains all the way to Komi near Siberia. As a result of the long journey and terrible conditions, lack of heat, food or water, many of them died on the way and were thrown from the train. One winter morning, after long weeks of passing through the snow-covered wilderness in Komi, the train stopped in the middle of frozen forest. I was there, it's in the middle of nowhere. And all the Jews <coughs> were ordered out. My father's family name, my father's family included. They were alone, dressed in rags, abandoned on the side of the tracks, lost in the middle of a frozen desert. Now somehow they had to survive. Of course, the majority of them, by the way, more than 90% did not. They were not supposed to. That's why <coughs> that was there. My great father Abraham who I was named after, died of terrible cold and heart and starvation, and soon after, his wife, a frozen shadow of the woman she used to be, died in my father's mayor's teenage arms. A few months later, <coughs> they were followed of their grave, but my father's five-year-old sister, Rachel, and 14-year-old, so, still only a young boy of 13, he had witnessed his whole family die one by one in front, of him, in front of him, and only he was left to bury them with his bare hands in the frozen earth. <coughs> he was now completely alone, the last of the Granat family <coughs> abandoned in that frozen hell. He was there more than four years. I was 15 when I first started to take an interest in my father's past. I was very curious to find out how, from this hell, a child with such a terrible experience could become the positive and optimistic man with a greater sense of humor in the world. My father was simply like this. I discovered almost unbelievable pain endless suffering and pure evil that had been inflicted of him and millions of other innocent people and couldn't imagine how that evil could have actually existed. However, during the journey of discovery, even during those terrible times, I also came across the opposite side of the human heart. My uncle Herzl was saved from, <coughs> from the horror of the Holocaust by a local priest who risked his life in hiding him from the Nazis. 
By the way, the last are still alive, celebrate 83 birthdays last week. For me, the amazing act of risking your own life, the lives of your family and your loved ones, to help a stranger, <coughs> completely stranger, only because you firmly believe it is the right things to do, is the highest value a person can aspire to. This erotic <coughs> These right people were few, but they saved many. <coughs> they risk all, no matter the dangers to themselves. They were ordinary people for many different walks of life, but as a result of their actions and courage, they become heroes. And thousands of people are alive today as a result of their sacrifice. Today, we are all aware <coughs> of the brutal and mass murders committed by the Nazi madness. And it is very <coughs> easy to lose faith in humanity when you witness such a terrible event. However, alongside this ultimate evil, and it was ultimate evil, we also saw the ultimate good, and it's also the ultimate good that was done by those normal people <coughs> behaving like angels. I come from the world of sports. I am a football coach. And as such, my aim is to try and push myself and my team to new limits all the, all the time. In contrast, these ordinary people who heroically risked their lives <coughs> for others took a stand against injustice were not able to push themselves any further than they did. They sacrificed their all for what they believed in. Some people say that sometimes it's the best to do nothing. On the other hand, history is not made by people who do nothing. And because of those daring unsung heroes who refused, refused <coughs> to stand by and do nothing, and made the decision to do the right thing no matter what, I, Avram God, <coughs> son of my loving dad, Mayor, who I miss him so much, grandson of Avram and Ruda, am able to stand in front of you today, a free and extremely grateful man, humbled by the heroism and self-sacrifice of these people who gave from the purity of their spirit and it will never be forgotten.